Hey guys, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you know I make a lot of antennas. I get a lot of questions and I get a lot of comments and one comment that keeps popping up is, yeah, you say this is how you build the antenna, but all you do is talk about it, tell how long it is and show it up in the air. Well, this is gonna be the video where I'm gonna cut the wire, show you how I cut the wire and how I build an antenna. Now, listen, before you go to the comments with, you need to solder those ends or whatever, this is a down and dirty, quick and easy, cheap way of just getting, in, getting some wire in the air portable out in the field and, and building an antenna and that's mostly what I do I've got a few antennas that I plan on using over and over again and I put a little bit more care into it but this is just quick and dirty down and easy how to get a wire in the air and make it work stick around Okay, I'm at Portsmouth City Park. I'm way up river from the harbor there. Uh, still salt water, this kind of gets brackish, but today I'm going to build a true ground plane, counterpoise type ground plane and not depend on the salt water. So a little different and probably more common of an antenna. Um, here's what I've got. Um, I'm going to build mine out of the 16 gauge speaker wire that I get at Walmart for like 17 US dollars. Pretty good. Um, you don't need to use that. I just, I do that so much. I wanted to do a video showing that. Um, you could also use uh, any other type, just some 22 gauge wire that I use. Um, I'm going to put it up on my little seven meter DX commander pole. This is a surf rod. What's called a surf rod holder. I use this in the ground and uh, what I do is uh, got a rubber mallet there. I just knocked that in. Um, if you're, these work in, in earth as well as sand. So uh, another thing, if you've seen some of my other videos, this is the uh, Anchor Away uh, um, Beach Umbrella Holder. I use that. Actually, I have a couple of those that are still in the basement in the house over in Poland that uh, these work on earth as well and great for holding up poles, although they just won't quite do it with the uh, with the seven meter uh, Dix Commander, more for the five meter poles. Um, here's another one I just found. This was like, uh, I don't know, 11, 10.99 US dollars. I found this at a, at a fishing bait and tackle place on the Outer Banks a couple weeks ago. Just had to pick it up to have it extra. Um, gonna use some wire strippers, a wire tool. And, uh, and get it up. I'm going to, uh, this is a one-to-one -one ballon. This is a one-to-one -one ballon, or I should say an un -un, but they're both chokes. Uh, the coax I'm using has a one-to-one -one choke on it. Highly recommend using a choke when building these. I'm gonna use some tape measures, and I'm um, gonna build some antennas. I'll we'll show you how to strip the wires and measure them. Um, this is what they call a banana clip. I get a few questions on these every once in a while. When using these, put the wire on the banana clip, the red is the driven element, the black is the ground, or when you put your counterpoise wires on, so pretty simple to show that as well. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, inside the bucket there in the bag is my uh, Zygo G90, so we're gonna use that as well. I'm gonna build kind of an unconventional antenna that I've built before, uh, but I'm doing it a little different, just just, just an experiment. Um, normally I use a four to one un, -un with that antenna, We'll see what the difference in uh, performance and how it acts with the four to one ballon from LDG. I'm not advertising LDG, but I have them all and I like them. They work well, pack well, and I've had some success with them. So I'm gonna build an antenna that I call the 17.5. It's basically a vertical 17 feet five or six inches, 17.5. So um, it's about 5.33 meters, multi-band, um, 20 through 10 meters. You could probably get six. I don't know, I don't have a six meter rig with me, but I'm um, gonna put that up in the air and uh, show you done. This video is intended for anything. If you were gonna build a quarter wave ground plane, I would use this and choke it either here, here, or with a coax with a choke. Put a piece of wire a quarter wave up in the sky, up in the air, driven element, and then uh, counterpoise wires underneath it. Typically with my counterpoise wires, I try to put at least four, maybe five or six, about five meters long each. It doesn't matter how long they are, but uh, that's kind of how I go. Anyway, I'll quit rambling and start cutting some wires. Okay, I've got a uh, clip at one end that holds the wire on when I'm by myself. And I usually put it about one inch or 25 millimeters longer than uh, what I'm cutting for. And that is because I'm gonna strip that in to put on the connection point and then just stretch it out and uh, find my spot where I want to cut it and then just cut the uh, cut the wires. So for us, it'll be uh, the 210, that's the uh, 17 and a half meter, uh, 17 and a half feet 
or I believe that's 5.33 meters. So there we go. I'm going to cut it right there. And here we go. Nice cut. There we go. So as you can see, and as you know, speaker wire is two pieces of wire. That's a great thing because I buy 100 feet of wire. I've got 200 feet, basically. What you do is just strip this apart. One of these is going to be the driven element. I'm going to use the other one as one of my counterpoise wires. Now, with counterpoise wires, everybody asks me length. I try to make them at least five meters long. Sometimes they're a little shorter. Sometimes they're longer. This was going to be obviously longer because it's going to be the same length as the uh, driven element that I put up. But try to get a different measure them out. It's not important. The important thing is just getting a good four, five, six pieces of wire on the ground spread out and into a good ground plane of counterpoise wire. So take this apart and then we'll do some stripping. And now that I've got the uh, wire apart, come down about, uh, let's see, we use the, uh, the stripping tool at the inch mark. I kind of got an inch measured off. I've got 16 gauge wire. So as you can see on the tool, go to the 16 gauge mark, 25 millimeters in, boom, I'm ready to go. That's how easy it was. Now what I do, and this is the part where everybody's going to say you should solder them things. Twist these things around, put a little curve in them. And then when you get your un -un or ballon for the driven element, the red side, there is a hole in these things. I don't use that. I just wrap it around, put it on there, tighten her down. And there you go. There is the driven element. There's some sunlight there. Driven element ready to go on the ballon. This will get taped to the pole and then I'll cut and strip some counterpoise wires the same way. I won't put you through the painful act of seeing me uh, cut all of those, but you saw how I did that. I'm going to do some counterpoise wires, get this thing up and we'll rock and roll. Okay, the antenna is up. I'm going to, like I said, using the uh, G90 with my uh, six amp hour LiPo 4 battery, but uh, I'll show you the construction. The coax here going out to the four to one transformer. And one of the things I do, I've got five counterpoise wires now what i do is i twist them all together and then take a short piece about four inches or so 100 millimeters put them together and then put that to the ground side as you can see not pretty but this works um as far as the pole is concerned i just use some electrical tape tape it every so often and get it up there so there's the uh 17.5 as I call it, with the five counterpoise wires. The counterpoise wires are not cut to any specific length. They're actually all over five meters because I used the uh, original one that I cut that was left over from the driven element as a measurement for the other ones. And then I had a couple pieces as I got towards the end, they, were, they had a little bit left, maybe half a meter, a couple feet. I just let it ride to get it up there. But there's the antenna. That's the Elizabeth River here in Portsmouth, Virginia, well inland. That bridge right there is called the Churchland Bridge if you're familiar with this area. I'm here at City Park. Unfortunately, this is not a Poda Park. So, uh, <laughs> hey, I'll just have to get on and see what I can do. But there you go. This is the, like I said, the 17.5 antenna. Bit of an experiment. Usually build this with an un I'm building it with a four to one ballon. I just wanna test it. Like I said, this is really just to show you how I build my antennas, but let's see if we can make some context. SWR on 20 meters, this thing's not bad. Not bad at all. Here, we'll, I'll check the other bands as well. Before when I used this, I had 20, 15, and 10 was about all I could get it uh, decent, but let's take a look. Well, here's, uh, wow, there's 17 meters, still under two. 15 meters, once again, under 2.0 to one. So uh, I'm liking this. 12 meters is a little wonky, <laughs> as I knew it would be, but uh, that's okay. And last but not least, uh, 10 meters. So if you want to build a pretty cool multi-band antenna, uh, 17 feet, five inches with a uh, four to one, either ballon or un, -un is not a bad idea. Kilo four, Oscar, both Oscar, five and five, QSL. Uh, QSL, QSL, you're five seven. I'm portable in Virginia, southeastern Virginia with just 20 watts. QSL, I'm using 250 whiskeys. My name is Yonis. And I am from Gojo Island, QSL, you're 555 five, five here into Portsmouth, Virginia. I'm portable with just 20 watts. Okay, you're doing a good, uh, good job. Organized signal. Tell me signal number 
Some of us were five, six with a three amp on there. So uh, yeah, that's a that's a good, uh, good readable copy now. Uh, what kind of system setup do you have there? I've got a uh, uh, the Zyger G90 uh, just w running. Uh, I've got a. Uh, I would call it a speaker wire antenna. I've got about a 17 and a half foot piece of speaker wire down to a four to one uh, transformer and a bunch of wires on the ground as counterpoise there. Just uh, playing around with some wires, having fun. Okay, well, that's, that's not a bad setup. It sounds like it's a real good affordable setup. Uh, you can easily probably set it up easily and take it down when you need it. Yeah, roger that. Yeah, I just cut it out, cut the wires and put them up there for sure. My QTH is Portsmouth, Virginia, the southeastern corner of Virginia here. Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. Uh, Kilo 4, Victor, Golf, Oscar, 5.9. Uh, QSL, you're 5.9 into Virginia. 20 watts portable here. Is it called correct? Uh, whiskey 4, uh, Victor, Golf, Oscar? Uh, no, it's Kilo 4, Oscar, Golf, Oscar. Hey, Oscar, Golf, Oscar, thank you. Oscar, Papa, 3.7, Echo, Uniform, Delta, X-Ray, Foxtrot. Well, I'm back in the Jeep. The wind was picking up there. It's kind of a chilly, windy day here, and being right at the uh, the mouth of the river here, the wind's just coming right out in on me there. So uh, hey, you probably saw some of that in the video for sure. But hey, what I wanted to do with this video is encourage you to get out, cut some wires, and build some antennas, and to answer some of the questions that I get. Um, this video, like I said, wasn't specifically about that 17.5 antenna. It was more or less for you to get out, just, hey, buy some wire, Get some transformers, some banana clips, whatever, some wire cutters, wire strippers, wire tool, whatever you want to call it, and build an antenna. It's a lot of fun, and uh, and I really enjoy doing it. And every day, I like to experiment with different things. Today's experiment for me it was uh, using the four to one Balan versus the four to one Unun. Um, we'll go into another discussion on unbalanced versus balance, ununs versus uh, balance or what have you there. That's, that's an entirely different topic that'll take a while. But I wanted to just experiment, experiment with the 4 to 1 balance. Usually a 4 to 1 balance is used like for a delta loop and that type of thing. But uh, hey, I wanted to give it a try and see how it obviously worked. That antenna did well um, and, and I really could get, uh, get it to work from 20 to 10. Um, it is a weekend here. There is a contest going on. 20 meters was just flooded as well as 15 with um, with a lot of uh, contesting. And I just didn't want to sit here and play contest all day. I, I like to, when I'm out portable, you know, I look for friends, do a little poda, but I also like to work some DX and, and, and that type of thing too. So that's where I was at. Anyway, like I said, get out there, get some wire, make an antenna, have fun. Learn all about antennas. Learn about ham radio. It's the most awesome hobby in the world, and I love it. And if you love it, hey, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends. Hope to see you soon.